Material scientist Subra Suresh led the National Science Foundation, NSF, from 2010 until mid-2013, when he accepted a position as president of Carnegie Mellon University. As director of the National Science Foundation, it's very important that we develop the right talent in the country for the long haul in science and engineering, education and research. He has been leading one of the top engineering programs in the country and for him now to be able to uh, apply that to the National Science Foundation is just uh, going to be outstanding. Before that, he was a materials scientist at MIT, first as a professor and later as dean. As dean of engineering, you get to sample a wide cross-section of activities. But his path to leadership was not straightforward. Born in Mumbai, India in 1956, Suresh had no idea where he would be going. I'm the first one in my immediate family to get a university degree. If I were to say one person who really inspired me, it is my mother who felt it was extremely important for me to go to university and she made a lot of personal sacrifices. And of course the biggest sacrifice is uh, to convince me to go wherever I need to go to get the best education. He obtained his master's degree in engineering from Iowa State University and his PhD from MIT. After a postdoctoral fellowship at UC Berkeley, he landed his first faculty job at Brown University in 1983. A decade later, he moved back to MIT. The early part of my career, I looked at how big things fail. Airplanes, big pressure vessels, pipelines, and fracture happening in big structures. I worked in a field for about 10 years, wrote a book, and went on to a different field, and then wrote a book. I went from things that are really big to something smaller. Material scientists try to look at the connection between structure, processing, and performance. One of the things we studied was the effect of that size scale on the properties of materials. Can we make materials better? Can we make them stronger? A lot of the issues that we dealt with uh, with respect to small scale mechanical properties of traditional materials also applies to biological materials. We chose to study mechanical properties of biological cells as they relate to human behavior and human diseases. For example, take a human red blood cell. An eight micron diameter red blood cell has to squeeze through a small blood vessel in the brain, which is several times smaller than its diameter. That means it has to mechanically stretch. And anything that happens to the red blood cell which compromises its ability to stretch will lead to a disease. If a protein comes from a mosquito that gets to the red blood cell that makes the cell stiff so that it cannot stretch, you can get malaria. It can happen in other diseases, in some types of cancer, things like diabetes. By bringing in very different disciplines together, uh, we can create new domains, new intellectual domains, and potentially new diagnostic tools. Many of those tools had commercial applications. When I started to work in microelectronics and thin films, many of the patents we filed were not only instruments and physical devices, but also conceptually different ways of interpreting results. I've had more than 100 students, postdocs, and visitors in my group. They've contributed to every part of my scientific career and this group comes from pretty much every country in the world. They become members of your extended family. His advice to them and anyone looking to succeed is simple. Keep your sights on at the global level, not at the local level. If you come from a very small town, don't assess your success or failure based on what a few people in your local town do. Keep it at the national level at least if not at the world level, because all the opportunities are global, all the competition is global, and all the excitement is increasingly global. Subra Suresh was awarded the 2013 Benjamin Franklin Medal in Mechanical Engineering and Materials Science.